Okay, well, it's finally time to do a little bit of work on my milling machine. So this is my Gorton Model 122 Master Mill. This came out of a, a high school and it's in pretty dang good shape. Um, you can see the original hand scrapings for the ways. Same on that access and the table itself looks good as well. This is a 10 inch by 42 inch table. It has a power down spindle and I believe we have power for the X. Right now, the table as far as, you know, this axis and this axis, they're moving great. No issues at all. The quill itself is not wanting to go up and down very well. And I'm also missing a handle for the actual Z for the whole knee itself, for the knee to go up and down. And so I gotta find one for that or make one. But the bigger thing, I want to free up the quill. I need this machine to be in operational condition. Problem right now is this machine, it says 440 volts, three phase, 60 cycles. So I need to figure out a way to convert this 443 phase box to 220. And I don't exactly know what I need to do to do that. I did already convert this electric motor up here from 440 over to 208, 220, three phase. So that is wired for 220 or 208, three phase. This box is not, and I am not sure exactly what I need to do, but for now, the bigger plan is trying to get it cleaned. I wanna get all the gunk and oil and grease, kinda of get all the, the base, get all these motors clean, and more than anything, get this head cleaned out and opened up and get it moving so the quill goes up and down freely. Um, this is a beast of a milling machine and I really can't wait to have it set up and able to be used. But I've had it for quite a while and it's just been sitting and I need a mill and so Mr. Gorton is gonna have to have to do it. This is my other mill. It is a, a duplex milling machine. It's a vertical and a horizontal milling machine. It's, it's really, really cool, um, made by Van Norman duplex milling machine. It's a number two. Um, I need to get a one flat belt for there. And beyond that, this thing runs and operates really, really well. So, but today's project is cleaning and getting the Gorton master mill ready to be used and everything freed up. And then we'll work on getting the, the motor working. It also does have a Bajor um, cooling system that will run coolant to the table and then it drains out of the table back over to that system. So I don't know if that works. I haven't put power to it at all. And then here's our, our variable speed adjustment there. And then we've got our gear selector, high, low, and neutral here. This would be your manual quill adjustment up and down. And then you can twist the whole head. I believe that is what that does right there. Um, I don't know a lot about it. I do see there's a bunch of grease and stuff coming out of there. There's a grease circ here. I'm betting it's just all kind of frozen up just from having sat for so long. So let's, let's jump right into all it. All right, so I got this, this vise I put on here. It's a Sheldon. It's a nice mill vise. But I just have it sitting here. We're gonna get it out of the way. have to do those ones by hand.
So whenever I'm cleaning the ways on uh, machine tools, I don't like to use degreasers because there's always a chance of getting some of that degreaser that has water in it in between somewhere. And so, you know, you don't want it getting stuck in that corner there. And then it sits there and rusts and rots out the area. So I use, use light oil, a WD-40, a PB blaster type oil. And you just kind of coat it. And some areas, like where it's bare metal, I'll use a light or small wire brush. Or you just use paper towels, rags, Scotch-Brite. Another thing I'll use is steel wool. But the major reason is if we leave some of this oil in the gaps and things, it won't hurt anything. It's only going to help the machine in the long run be more uh, oiled up and it's not going to cause any rust. So we're going to start by completely cleaning that. Um, we've got some help today. He's going to be doing a bunch of the, the cleaning here. So we're going to get right after that. Well, here we are. We've got the machine looking so much better. We've still got quite a bit of, you know, rust and miscellaneous, you know, coolant and stuff, but it is looking really nice, the body of it. The biggest problem I'm having right now is that this, basically the spindle shaft or the quill shaft, whatever you want to call it, is stuck and it will not go up and down. So I've got this whole side all the handle off, the bearing, we've got the actual uh, feed mechanism disconnected, so this bearing is loose. The whole hand dial is out, the face is off, and we have it down far enough after some beating that now the gear in there spins fine, and there's no broken teeth. And I've been digging and digging and digging and trying to figure out what's going on here. Well, after some research on the interwebs, I found that this little hand tightener, you don't just need to loosen it, you need to take it out. Apparently, in there, there is another set screw and a locking pin. And that locking pin may be in too tight, putting too much pressure on the shaft here so that it won't go up and down or come out. I haven't found anything broken, and that's been the most difficult part of this, I guess, process on this. But it is looking amazing. We're getting everything moved and freed up. We're going to pull that out now and see what we find. Let's get some padding down so we can make sure that doesn't hit the, the knee there, and then we'll go from there. All right. Uh -oh. All right, so it is in there. This started to bend down this pin, and I started to kind of try and strip this. So I'm gonna, we're gonna get the torch out and heat that, and see if we can get it broken loose. Alright, right here there's a pin that's supposed to stop it. It's bent already, but I think it's loose. Can you give me some uh, vice grips? So I'm going to try and get that pin out, and then we can just back this whole thing out and work on this on the bench. 
Because really what I want is behind that. There. We'll do it that way. Yeah, there's something in there. All right, there is a, I think it's brass, and the magnet doesn't work, so I've got some of the old heavy grease. Let's see if I can use that to wiggle it out. Come on. I like playing Operation, except for nothing zaps you. Almost there. There we go. There we go. It's like, like a little bl brass plug. I don't think that would have been causing our issue because it wasn't bound. I can see the spindle now. All right. You know this is a terrible idea, but I think I've gotten everything out of the way of the quill, spindle, and we're going to try and pound it out the rest of the way. So, here we go. Stop. Let me just make sure. Still looking good. Okay. Almost out. Almost out. Keep going. Stop, 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 stop. We're there. Okay. See, we're not there. What the heck? That's the spring. That's your quill ring. So what we're doing is we're pounding down in the middle of this, trying to get that whole quill out. Something is binding it in there and I don't know what. Um, this spring should retract the whole spindle quill back up when you loosen either this handle here or this nut for the collar there, both of which aren't in there anymore. So, not sure what's going on here. All right, so that just presses up into there. And this is what rides, kind of guides that spindle down. Give it, give it another tap. Tap or hit? A hit, just one. Do it again. Do it again. Yep, keep going. Try it again. Take this motor off. Try to anyway. The belt looks like it's in really good shape. Okay, take that. 
Don't let that fall apart. And there's our belt. It looks really, really, really good. I'm gonna tilt the head that way so I can get better access to this area. The way you do that, you loosen a couple, three bolts, and then you spin this. Other way. And there's a worm gear in there that is tilting the head. So now what I need to do is I need to get this wedged in a way that it'll open this collar up enough for this spindle to come out. All right, stop. This is a leather mallet. Oh, what is going on here? I just think we gotta get this spindle out middle part. It's supposed to come out as an entire unit. It shouldn't be binding. All right, I need to know at what point we're gonna start hitting these gears because what's gonna happen is we'll hit the gear on that brass tooth and we'll shear one off. It should not be this tight. What? That's a little pleasant surprise. Yeah. Yummy. Scalpel. I don't think this has ever been changed. Because all the junk has been leaking on every seam that we've been cleaning. It's whatever the heck this crap is. It's melted and solidified and melted again. <sighs> now, how in the world do we get the spindle out? I have a feeling it has something to do with that chrome piece. This, this side is actually out. Let's go a little bit more and then I'm gonna put a block in here and I'm gonna try and hit this, this tube that way. I don't wanna put it on this gear. I don't wanna lose the gear, so. All right, 
I want to say we find two bars. We'll do that. Find me another one about that size. All right, now come on this end. I'm going to put a block here and I'm going to hammer a this that way. Tappy tappy. So this is the bull gear and it spins at your normal rate when it's in high. So when you get it into low and you want to go slower, the bull gear goes all the way down and engages with this gear here. Like that. So now it'll spin, but it spins slower. And so this has to be able to move forward and backward. And that's not even the real problem that we're trying to deal with. The real problem is literally just trying to get it to the quill to move. I feel like they're tapered. Oh, gug, 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 gug. All right, I think I got it. Let's find out. There we go. Finalmente. There's our upper bull gear. The bearings in these babies are in such good shape. I have yet to find a broken tooth. And all of this that we had to file, that is all just due to the, the beating on this that we had to do, so. All right, I think we finally got it. We uh, had to open up this slit a little bit more. Got it lined up, it should come. All right, go ahead. All right, stop, that's it. Boy. So that is our problem child right there. Why? I don't know yet. Because dang, that cylinder in there looks good. I think there's just enough corrosion or a burr somewhere, but we'll take a better look at it here in a bit. All right, well, here is a large majority of the parts that we pulled off of the mill. And for the most part, they are in great condition. Absolutely no wear. The bearings are tight. They're not growly. Not a single tooth on any of the gears are broken or messed up. There's no scoring on the cylinder, on the actual uh, quill anywhere. I, I just, I'm really having a hard time even figuring out what's causing the binding. But I think it's just a matter of it having sat so long and some grease and whatnot built up in the the actual housing that the spindle slash quill goes up and down in and so i am going to just go ahead and clean all this and we're going to put it all together this machine runs a 40 taper which is awesome it's a pretty easy one to get a hold of so um it has this bajor automatic well not automatic manual oiler you pull this and it shoves oil through a passage into um, the actual table ways and lubricates them. But the belt itself, uh, I guess for anybody that wants it, it is a 2322V434 and then maybe an OT. And it says something like uh, Speed Selector Incorporated right there. So the belt is in amazing shape. That's the main uh, drive belt. 
This is the idler belt. I don't know if it has a number on it. I can actually look. There's something. I feel like I'm wiping it off. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but it's still in really good shape. Not cracking anywhere. Um, so I don't know. It's the other thing that was kind of bound up is this little selector is how you would you turn this little dial here, and that puts you in high, neutral, or low, and low gives you the back gears. So then these little teeth here come in contact with the teeth on this bull gear, and then this bull gear moves up or down to engage with the back gears in low or disengage from the back gears when it's in neutral or high. Um, that was bound up, wasn't really going up and down real well. So, I mean, it's a lot of this is what we're finding in there. Old grease that's just been sitting there forever because this bull gear is from that same housing. There's our, uh, the housing for the whole spindle and quill. And if you look in there, there's no scoring, there's no hitting, there's no damage. So it has to be just, you know, build up of, of crappy oil and grease for years. One thing we did have to do to open up this a little bit, you have to basically take some wedges or chisels and pound them in there to open that so that you can get the whole thing to slide out. Um, we had to beat the whole thing out of there, which was not ideal. And I was, <laughs> the whole time I was worried about breaking something, nothing broke. Nothing got damaged. Nothing is wrong. I mean, this machine is an absolute tank. Um, when they say that these master mills are over and above what a, a bridge port is, it's, it's a night and day difference. There is absolutely no comparison at all. Um, the only downside to it is that it does not, the head does not nod, so you can't tilt the head forward. Um, and they're heavier to move, but I, I don't really care about that. I, I can move anything. There's no worry in my mind about that. Um, so, and even the ways, if you see, you can see the original hand scrapings are, are everywhere. I mean, the entire, every way that would have been hand scraped is hand scraped and still beautifully visible, um, including the ways for the, for the table, the Z axis for the knee and um, the Y coming back and forth. The, the whole head for the worm gear, it moves so you can twist it nicely. I haven't actually tried to twist the whole turret. Um, you loosen this nut, this nut, and then you turn this and the whole turret will, will turn 90 or whatever, however many degrees. There is no, there's no wheel or measurement on that for getting to a specific certain point, but there is one for when you twist the head like this. You can go 90 one way or 90 the other way. So we didn't, if you see the little brass gears in there, those are what the quill spindle assembly, that is how you manually or power feed the spindle up and down with. And if you look in there at them, they're in great shape. No damage, no missing teeth. It's not, you know, it's beautifully smooth. And so I, again, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on here, but we're focusing on getting everything clean, getting everything to the point where we can, you know, really assess what the issue is and um, what we need to do to clean it and get it figured out. So, so next up we'll start kind of detailing some parts and then we'll move on from there. So this is 400 grit sandpaper. I'm starting with that. I've got a thousand here too. Basically, it's so tight this is the portion that needs to slide up and down inside that barrel. It's so tight, it's not, it gets bound up. And so it's close. 
So this portion here is the bottom lip and it pretty much slides um, perfectly when it's clean and when I can get the right angle. See, just like that. So, yeah, that should be good. I'm on better. Tolerances are so tight. This machine, I swear, it almost has had very little, very little use. Um, I think there has been some repairs on a couple small things. I did not take this part. I do not want to take that apart if I can avoid it. The bearings in there are sealed. From the factory, I don't know if they're original or not. They sound fine, but yeah, we're gonna go with it. Let's see if we can get this in there and see how it fits. I'm gonna just put a light mist. I probably should do this dry, but can always try it that way later. It's been going in about that far. It about gets tight right there. So I almost get it in there and then it gets tight. so tight in there I really want to hone it out but if I hone it out even slightly I might mess up some tolerances because I might just be not getting this in there at a straight angle but first I wanted to get the any kind of burrs off this edge all right let's give it another shot It slides to there and binds. All right, so I am working on trying to get this quill spindle assembly to move freely in there, in the head of the mill. I have literally, I've, I've taken a die grinder to every edge, every single edge, all the way around there, all the way around the bottom. I went over all of these teeth, looking for any kind of burrs. I did the same in here. I went on this edge. I went on every one of these inner edges. I went on that hole. I went on the inside of the inside of this all the way around that block, basically looking for any burrs that might be holding that spindle assembly from going in and out. 
I found nothing. I don't, I, I don't get any like scratches going vertically when we're trying to put it in. I am having a very difficult time figuring out what is causing this thing not to go up and down. Here is a hypothesis. So this mill is number 12. And the pictures I saw when I actually saw this for sale and went to go buy it were of a the mill at in a line of these mills at a high school. So the high school had multiple of this mill and must have closed down their program, whatever. He bought it at an auction, got it back to his shop, and then never had the power to run it. The quill, when I bought it, never would come down. So hypothesis is this machine was broken or something happened to the spindle assembly and they had to replace it with a different one and so they put this one in from a different mill or maybe they bought a new one and i don't know if these are made each individually to the mill so that it will you know they, they hone it out to the perfect size for this to move freely in there or not i'm not sure if that's the case it would make sense and maybe they put this in couldn't get it working the program closed down they auctioned everything off and i got what they had not quite finished there is nothing broken anywhere i haven't found a single piece that's damaged i haven't found any issues uh all of the bearings are smooth i mean i beat the heck out of this shaft and so i know i put a lot of force in the bearings in here i'm not really worried about that at this point i'm gonna run it and if we have issues i know how to pull it out and take it apart and put new bearings in it it's really not that hard to do but right now i still can't get the spindle to move freely so my plan is this to hone it out until we can get this to move in and out of there freely the top side where the bull gear goes in once it's in there it moves up and down beautifully like i don't want to take any out of the top side at all and so the hard part with this is this big square opening so when you run that hone anywhere past that this stone will get caught there and basically stop or break. So what I've done to fix that problem is I found this piece of steel and I ground some radiuses on the corner. I ground it flat so that it'll fit in there. So the plan will be to put this in just like so and then hold it there while I'm honing it and then that will allow me to hone all the way through because the i i need it to be the most free right in this region because that's where the actual uh it moves up and down in there versus down here it's just a matter of you know like opening this up a wider with this wedge to be able to get it in past that the real area that it moves is up there and then the quill just comes down through that area and there's a spring that rides in the middle here i don't know I, I thought about putting a light bulb in there to heat it up enough but i think even if i do that i'm still gonna have it cool back down and i'm not looking for a press fit here i'm looking for a, a, a almost like an interference fit or basically just a perfect fit that it moves freely but yet has no play and right now i don't have that so let's just go ahead and give the hone a shot we'll see what happens um, I don't know how much honing, so I think I'll start out real gently. And I'm sure machinists everywhere are crying about the fact that I'm doing this. But at the moment, I have an inoperable, unusable machine that... It kind of sucks that I have to do this because parts for these pills are not available. But beyond that, there's no issue here. And I don't see, just like you'd hone any other cylinder out, I don't see any real issue. Um, I did take 400 grit sandpaper to this to try and knock down anything else and I, I really don't want to put this on the lathe and try and cut any off of it mainly because I just don't want to take too much off. I'd rather hone it out and take very very little off of the casting there and make this piece fit. So let's let's do that and we'll see what happens.
I needed a new chuck on this drill for a long time. <laughs> it slips off and it slips off and it slips off, but it's what I have at the moment. Maybe we wipe it out and we see, I don't want to take too much out. Obviously it will take away tolerance here, but let's just see what we have from here. And as you can see here, this block that I made, I kind of just did a real gentle V on the, or kind of a rounded edge on the two by 72, just on one of the, the rollers. It's not perfect, but it kept us from breaking the stone and falling into that gap. And that was the whole point. And now we were able to get all the way through it in one pass without having to come from the other side. I'd rather take less out than more and then work our way towards whatever, so. All right, so I wanted to check this spindle quill to figure out if there's any run out. I know I've got literally next to zero on this chuck in this spindle. Um, I don't have this lathe under power, but I figure we just check it. So we are sitting at five thousands right now. And if we run this around, we go up, we're at 90. And then 84, so there's 21 thou a run out there. And I checked it here, 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 and it just got worse and worse. This is a three jaw chuck. I have no experience with it, and I, I literally bought it used, have not cleaned it, done much to it. I did clean the three jaws before I put this in the chuck. Um, it could be out of straight just here. Um, it could be the chuck is fine, or it could be that this is just not true. Now, for all you machinists out there or people that know more than I do, how accurate does this quill have to be in regards to round? It's not spinning. All it's doing is going basically up and down. I just have the head horizontal right now. I don't know. I, I really, I've thought about taking this on the lathe and taking a slight skim pass, but I almost would prefer to take material out of this cylinder and leave that alone until it's absolutely necessary. But um, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do some more honing on this. We're gonna try it. And you're gonna let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, and this should be perfectly concentric and perfectly round. Um, Cause uh, yeah, you know more than me. All right, so because I don't have this lathe powered, I want to do a little bit of sanding on this barrel, make sure there's not any high spots or anything. And so I've got the actual shaft clamped in the lathe. I've got uh, 360, 400, and 500 grit sandpaper. So we're going to get this wet, and I will show you the redneck engineering we've come up with to make this spin so we can get a little speed to it. Um, and then I've got, you don't really want grit on your ways on the lathe. And so my plan is once I get this lathe working, this will be kind of like the, the crappy lathe for doing those things. This will be the one for precision at this moment. I'm not going to mess with that one. This one's got a three jaw and so it'll, it's faster to set up. So here is what we've come up with to drive. We're going to put it right there on that and it's going to spin like, go ahead. And then I will sand here. If only we had a lathe. Here we go. A little of that there. I think we'll start with 360 because it's rougher.
<laughs> All right. You got to actually polish that quite a bit. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Not by me. Because this surface has to ride on that collar oh, at the here. bottom. Yep. We are going to have to clean that off to make sure I got any kind of grip. I agree. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think I'm, I think that's as much as I want to try right yeah, now. Yeah, we can yeah clean it off and give it a give it a shot. See what happens. All right, let's check it this time. We took the wedge out, and I don't know if the wedge had caused it to egg out a little bit, but I don't know. I'm kind of I'm optimistic. Harder to get straight to start, but ooh, okay. I think this is gonna have to rope down. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good now. Let's see. All right, let's see how well. Oh man! Wow! Oh baby! Yeah, oh, it that's... looks like it's still slightly. I can see the. Let's see if I can turn it. Oh, yep. I can. You can turn. Oh no way! All right, see if you can push it. Yep. Oh yeah, and this is horizontal. It should be going up and down with gravity. So it's got to go. Awesome. Go that, that way. Yep, not too far, way too far. Right about the, in there someplace. All right, I'm, I'm just glad I can do that. Wow. That's that's amazing. And then I can, I can move it. And the quill will probably stop about right there because there's a spring that will compress there and there's a ring here that we'll still have to get pressed on, but yes. All right, so I ended up taking out the the entire, basically the quill gear. And these are the gears that go down in this housing. Got that all cleaned out looking nice. So now I'm gonna reassemble it. All right, so I got this gear here. Go. And then that's how you engage and disengage the the quill. And then this one is how you would engage and disengage it to power feed it. So let's leave it right there. Because I don't want to... Uh... I don't want to have the teeth in here when we put this shaft in. Or the quill. All right, now we're going to drop in the uh, snap ring. Beautiful. All right, let's get this back in. Maybe. Butter smooth. Push it all the way to that snap ring. Okay. Beautiful. All right, this is the spring that pushes the, the quill back. And this little ring, this hole has to be lined up with this hole. This trick is getting in there straight.
There we go. All right. So after much fighting and honing and whatever, as you can see here, I've got this engaged. And would you look at that? The spindle comes down, the quill comes down exactly the way it should. I don't have the other uh, manual handle on right now, but we've got we've got the idler belt on, and this cover basically right there will go up and cover those pulleys and belts. I want to show you this too. So when it's a variable speed setup, and when this pulley is in here. It sits right about there, like that, and you can't really see it. But, right on this ring where you see those lines in the aluminum, that is where the brake engages. So, your spindle start here, and then to stop it, there's a micro switch inside this case, and you pull this back. Hear those clicks? That'll stop the spindle. And then when you pull past that, these two brass or bronze blocks essentially squeeze against this ring slowing down and stopping the spindle all the way i have them adjusted in as far as it'll go they are wore down pretty far in regards to the actual wear surfaces now granted this whole thing is bronze but they've got like a almost like a little step in them that uh is supposed to wear out first i don't know if you can get those anymore so that's why I've got them kind of adjusted all the way as far as I can. But the whole mechanism for the RPM is all set to its lowest position, which is 6.5. And yeah, I'm gonna start getting the head assembled. The quill's working how it should. Going up and locking with that little handle there. But just as easy as can be. Beautiful. Totally pumped about that. I was really kind of worried about that. So, next up, we're going to get the rest of the head on. And then we'll finish putting it all together. And then my plan is to power it up. I want to see if this baby runs. But I wanted to show you the quill works by hand. We'll, uh, we'll show you it under power once we get it powered up. Check it out. The mill is all complete and back together. Everything is all in operational condition. The quill moves by hand beautifully. Up and down. Got the high-low all back together. I need to possibly adjust the um, variable RPM. That's why I don't have the actual cover on, the Gorton top cover. We've got the whole power down feed hooked back up. Everything is clean. Check out the, the scrapings in this thing. They're all still there and it has these box ways. So instead of it being like a dovetail here on the actual Y axis, it's just a square, unlike back here on the Z where it has a dovetail way, but you can still see all the original scrapings on just about everything. Um, sides here, both sides over there. It's it's absolutely amazing. The table still needs a little bit of cleaning and I want to take it apart a little bit more and kind of get some of the ways cleaned out better. Same with down in that area. But at this moment, we now know that if we were to run it, we're not going to have any issues with the quill. That's the whole point of what we did is basically taking it apart to free up the mechanism in the head there so that we don't have issues. So I was able to figure out it was really easy to convert this panel from 443 phase to 243 phase. And all you had to do is move. So there's this little diagram here. It's also in the actual paperwork. You move H2. So essentially there's a wire up here, two wires on this, H1, H3, H2, H4. I don't understand why it's not H1, H2, H3, H4. Anyway, H2, this wire that's currently on H2, was on H3. And so if you look down here at this diagram, H1 to H3 is 460. But if you move H1 to H2, it's 230. So I moved 
the wire from H3 to H2, and now we're 208-ish to 240, three phase, and I haven't done anything past that. Um, I did find out this machine was built June 10th, 1969. All right, so right now I've just got it wired into my, my auxiliary lead coming out of the three phase panel, and I use that to just test machines. I can just wire nut all of the wires to the lead coming out of the panel, and then this black lead goes into the box. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on some power. Let me uh, show you what we have to do here. All right, to power it up, come over here to the single phase panel, and we give the phase converter power. Come over here to the phase converter power, turn on the main, and then we turn on the breaker for that one lead. I don't have any other powered or circuits in there yet, but what we're about to do soon is run circuits from this panel over to where all the three phase machines are. And then I'll have additional breakers in the panel for those. All right, now to turn the phase converter on, all I do is I click this button here and the phase converter outside is now generating. So we've got this thing wired 230, 243 phase, we'll close the box. Let's make sure that's on off. That's not on. That's on off. Uh, and then the coolant is off. So if we flip this to on, here's something in the box. Nothing. A little bit of magic smoke coming out of that thing. It's not a good thing. Let's uh, slip that to off. I don't know if we're getting the right power. All right, we're gonna go with that range so it doesn't look like a lot when the millivolts show up. So if we put test between any two of the leads, we should have around 230. All right, so we've got 237 on that one, on that one we've got 222, and then on this one we've got 237. To ground, 208, one fifteen, one oh four. I'm not sure if that's right. Let's go check it out the panel. Let's go ahead and turn the phase converter on. So if we test any two of these leads, well, that shouldn't be open. All right, there we go. 238, 231, 239. So now, if we test on this breaker here, two thirty-eight, two forty-three, two twenty. Well, it seems like the power is right. And what if we test from neutral? We get two oh nine. 115, 116, which makes sense. That's exactly what we're getting on the other end. Interesting. What about on this breaker here? 
231, 239, 238. And then to neutral, 208, 115, 116, 115 and a half. All right, well, let's go back to the machine. Okay, so I think I had it wired wrong. Um, the, the panel for the shop's three-phase and the panel for this mill are wired slightly different in regards to just electrical colors. So in the panel here, we have white is L1, red is L2, same as the panel, and black is L3. And I have in the panel black as L1 and blue slash white as L3. I mark it blue so that I know it's not a neutral leg and it's just the third leg of the three phase. So instead of changing the panel over, come over here. I just basically swapped the colors. So we've got blue to black from blue from the panel in the shop to black on the machine. Red stays the same and then black from the panel in the shop to white in the panel for the machine. And then the green and bare copper is our, our neutral or our ground. All right, so we can test these leads, just make sure we have power. So we should have power on the black leg coming from the panel, the red leg coming from the panel, but the blue leg should not. That is our third phase, essentially, that the generator creates for us. So we've got it in the right spots. Now if we turn the converter on, now we have that third leg of three phase. So assuming that's right, we come over here to the panel and we'll just check, make sure we have power at the right places. Should be basically all of these three legs. And I have a cover off. This, uh, this cover protects those legs from anybody reaching in and touching them. So we've got power on that leg, power on that leg, and power on that leg. And then down here below, there should be nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You can flip this switch right here. We'll just show you how you're supposed to do it. Basically close the panel. So now the box is closed. Should be able to just flip it on. And assuming everything works right, this is your power for the motor. Nothing. Huh. Does this work? No. That does not sound right. So this is the power spindle down feed. Yeah, I don't want to run that very long like that. It doesn't sound good. What about spindle start? So what if we go forward? Oh, there we go. Something's rattly up there. All right, well, uh, what if we disengage that? So reverse, reverse, spindle start. So that brake does not work real well. So once you have it, let's see, what way is that spinning? So I've got it on reverse. So it was spinning like that. Now if we go forward, it should spin the other way. Why are you not working now? Huh, interesting. Um, <laughs> not exactly sure what's going on here. Been messing with this thing, I think, 
it just had a little camera shyness it was uh not wanting to work well and obviously it definitely didn't want to play well with others when i first started messing with this thing so let's go ahead let's put it on forward and then to start the spindle you click spindle start So there's some knocking or some sort of noise up there. But as you can see, we're spinning. I have no idea if there's any run out or how bad that is, but so here's what happens when you adjust the speed. Sweet. Yeah, that thing runs. Definitely some uh, slight bit of clunk. That noise. Let's see if that's tightenable. But let's try a few other things. So it has a power X axis. So if I engage that, let's see if this works. Sweet. that out so this should kick into here and it should stop moving the motor will still turn like that and you can go go low and slow that motor there sounds like it needs a little bit of a cleaning, but. We're just blowing the cobwebs out of the old dog. So basically, this would be kicking it one way. That's your neutral, allows you to hand crank it. And this is kicking it the other way, so that when you power it, it goes in the direction. Or if it's in the middle, it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so it's got a power down feed for the spindle. And a couple things you gotta do. You have to engage this dial which when you disengage it this just freewheels then the other thing is right here so when this is facing the front this gear and the electric gear from this motor here are not engaged to one another but when you engage it the other way like that now they're locked together let's go ahead and leave it disengaged so the spindle's not attached to anything at the moment. Um, I think that there's an off. Something is making noise down there. So if we go up. Oh. Some kind of magic, magic smoke came out of that motor. 
if I remember right, when I got this machine, this panel was off of it. Yeah, see, that's loose, and I haven't touched that. All right, I remember this. Let's let's just go ahead and kill power. All right, so yeah, we've got some tape marks. 1025 I mean x is that our variable? And y is that our other variable? Do we do a little uh algebra here so yeah they they wrote on there x and y x and y so those black wires are all the ones going let's see where do those go those go from this little panel down into the motor and then these wires coming out of this tube there are what come into the panel or into this uh, box from the main panel so so I think I'm gonna mess with this I'm gonna get the wiring diagram out and try and figure out if somebody got some wires wrong and if they did let's get them back what's that some sort of a butt connector stripped wire Yep, we're not the first ones to open that. So we've got the mill all put back together. Got the chip covers back on the ways. We've got the caps and all the additional pieces, handles, etc. put back on. Only thing I don't have back on is this little cover here. I believe this cover and then another cover on the other side would be where you would put access for a powered knee for the motor. Um, I'm actually not sure about this one. I know on the other side There's a very similar color cover. It looks like it's just casting But you can take this cap off and there's three Threaded holes and then there's a mount here and here and here and here For all of the mechanism you would need to have a powered knee or the powered z-axis So basically so this whole piece goes up and down under power. So we've got the wiring all ready to rock and roll I have not figured out exactly what's going on with the power down feed, the power spindle. I'm not going to mess with it at this time. I want to make a cut with it, just see what it does. But right now, as you can see, I've got the, this big old honking vise on here. It's going to, the cutter's going to go right into there. So we need to bring the knee down. So the other thing I need to find for this machine is an actual handle that will control and, and be able to raise and lower the knee. Um, I did take off this handle and this handle will mesh up with those teeth but it does just slightly contact that handle for the y-axis and so I'm still going to use it to lower it but it's not going to be a long-term fix I want to figure out something else for it but let me get, let's get this lowered and then we will power this thing up and do a quick test cut with it All right, should be all the way down. That will lock the knee on. We'll go forward. We need to move this back. Okay, so lock that spindle tight, start it up. Happened. You 
use all power because I think we still have the table. switch keeps bumping out. So if I come over here, this is your magnetic switch. I push this in. We should now have power forward and spindle start. Died again. Let's give it power again. So that one is tripped. I'm wondering if I need to do any additional wiring changes. So once that cools, you should be able to reset it. There we go reset. I have to do some testing on that. That is a 709, Allen Bradley 709 it says uh, 709 A0D 120 volt 60 cycle. Well, that's different. That is what's tripping. And it has an N20 on this little uh, breaker here. Well, I guess a problem for another day. All right, well, I was just kind of getting the hang of it. Starting to figure out my feeds and speeds. Just, just taking the top off of that. And the cut looked so rough because it was slowing down as I was finishing the cut. Something's going on with the mag switch in there. It keeps tripping. So it'll start now if I go forward. Power start. Well, I gotta turn the power back on. So now, should start. So that looks much better. That is a good clean cut. And I'm still not sure what's going on with that mag switch. Might be an issue there. I don't know, maybe we just need to keep messing with All it. All right, for right now, it is what it is. We were able to make a pretty good looking, just a face cut on that. So the mill works, everything is looking nice. I need to put a dial indicator on it and we'll check it. I 
think we'll do a second video. I gotta set this thing up, I gotta level it. I wanna figure out what's going on with that mag switch, figure out what's going on with the spindle down feed. I wanna find some 40 taper tooling for it. Um, I would like to add a DRO to it. I just need to get a kit. And then after that, we're just gonna start using this old dog. I still need to do quite a bit of cleaning on the actual uh, table itself and the ways underneath it, we have not gotten into those. So yeah, I'm pumped. From where we started to having a machine where the spindle would not plunge at all to where we are now with it working freely, spinning, rewired, cleaned, and almost set up, that mill is gonna be a monster. I've heard people say that these uh, Gorton Master Mills make uh, bridge ports look like Happy Meal toys com in comparison, so I'm pumped to own one. Also gotta find a handle for the knee or make one, and then after that, it's gonna be just putting it to work and start using it. Maybe we'll find some new brake uh, break shoes for the inside of that. The brake does actually work and it does stop the machine. Um, it's not perfect, but it does work. So there's that. And then after that, it'll be another machine in the arsenal ready to rock and roll.